Yo, what is going on guys? This is Jet. YGO here today. So today we're coming at you with my updated March 2023 deck profile. So yeah, this has been a little bit long waited, mainly due to the fact that the ban list was a slaughterhouse and it really reset the format. And I really want to take some time to kind of take a step into where the meta is going to be shifting. There's also the Trap Tricks deck coming out, which now we're seeing this deck perform pretty well, especially through some of PAX episodes where a lot more people are starting to pick up the deck and realize you can play it with just three structure decks. So uh, yeah, given all that, I decided to just wait a little bit, theory, uh, theory of the deck, because you know, when I'm coming into a new format, I'm just playing the standard 12 hand trap ratio where it's like three ass, three Valor, three Imperm, and three, uh, three Nib, which is great. It still works great, right? And what I kind of found as I went through is that a lot of these decks, you can really just win through one single blow card or one really good one, uh, one trade off, right? Like where you can like Kaiju or Imperm or something, right? So a lot of these cards and a lot of these cards like really do well in this format as opposed to uh, Nationals format or in like all the way back to like Drytron where it kind of just became a thing where you just need two hand traps and then you could deal with the boards, right? And if you didn't draw two hand traps, you would just lose. So this kind of comes around to my theory where people are saying, oh, Cash is insane. Like, oh, Cash is like the best deck. Like, yeah, Cash Tier is definitely a good deck. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I, I also don't think it's the best deck. Uh, I think it's definitely one of them. Absolutely. Um, the thing, the reason why I'm okay with Cash is because it's not one of those, it's one of those decks where you can literally just draw, they have to choose what they're playing around and you can literally just draw a neighbor and evenly and they have to play around one of them. Or even then if they decide to, to make a Rise Heart, you can straight up just tribute it off of the kaiju and then it just gets rid of their whole board, right? They have to watch what they're playing around. Like game game one, they're gonna make a huge board typically, and if you kaiju them, they just have to scoop their cards. Like what are they gonna do, right? So um, I've even seen the deck like scoop to a single imperm or an ash on the unicorn or an ash on the planet. Like the deck's good, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing to be feared of like tier or whatever it was, right? So if I'm gonna be quite honest, I what I'm trying to say is I'd rather play against something like that. Than opposed to based where scythe scythe was a thing scythe scythe was a thing why is that so hard to say and where they could literally you could literally hand trap them sometimes even twice and if you didn't do it right they could literally just it was because Hulk and Hulk was a card because you could just normal summon a hand trap and make Hulk as an extender like that to me was a lot harder to play against because all they have to do is find a way to make scythe if you didn't stop it you just lost unless you're playing a trap deck so uh, yeah, there's so many, this format is so diverse and it really shifted, right? So I have to take some time to figure out, you know, obviously I'm going to stick to the same main deck cards, right? I'm just going to kind of breeze over those, not explain them too much. It's more so the utility and the consistency cards. So the one thing I really found, because at this point we're about a year, we're about a year past when we got our support date. And when we got our support, this deck was for a while, I'm going to say it was like one of the best. It was definitely at one point, probably the best deck just because of the way you could play utility cards and the way it would play. Um, and now the way it worked was I found there was a lot of instances where I was losing to an Ash or it was just too slow because one single Ash was just like people were asking the Kepler. And if they did, you're not, you're not supposed to ask the Kepler, but when people ask the Kepler, it was like really good, right? And I'd have to pass and I'm like, I can't really have it losing that often. So I had to figure out a way to conjunct like a more consistent build, but be able to play enough effective utility cards. And then I found I could do that because I didn't have to play 12 hand traps like I did prior, because that's how I started out playing. It was 12 hand traps, right? And as I went through the format, I was like, well, I don't need 12 hand traps. I can make a mix. We'll get into my dev profile so I don't like spoil any cards, but uh, you get the point. If you guys see my stream, this is pretty well this, the list that I was playing on stream. Uh, so we'll get into that a little bit more. And to kind of touch on that as well, uh, ever since the new format, I have won um, the last two in-person locals. Um, I have won. Um, I won the first one back. And uh, I also, so the other in-person that happened this week, which was the second one, um, I came second. Okay, but what happened was um, I was playing against Cash Tier. It was game three, game three in round five. I activated a, a gate, he asked it, I had Gamma in hand, so I could have made Baron and just continue with combo. And his hand, after I seen it, was literally just like three planet and like nothing to extend. So um, I would have won this game. I Gammaed and my driver was not sided in. So I literally just scooped up. I was like, this is just terrible. Yeah, so I got second place. So that was technically a first place win. And then if you guys see my uh, Grandmaster, that was this week. And then if you guys see my Grandmaster Games uh, uh, video, like my stream, I also took home first place at that. So uh, 
Yeah, ever since the format, I've technically won th for sure won two. Uh, I guess you're just gonna technically say three because I didn't sign in driver. So yeah, I've won three locals since I came came back. Um, definitely looking forward to the next like bigger event, like a regional. Um, I'm not sure. I think if I can remember correctly, the next Toronto regional is like the beginning of April. And if it is, I am in San Francisco and I will not be able to attend that. So I hope it's not them, but we'll see. I'll try to find a way to get to another one. Um, but yeah, I think I've done enough talking. Um, I'm just going to step right in my deck profile and I hope you guys like it. See you on my mat. Okay, guys. So uh, let's get right into uh, the deck profile here. So, um, yeah, so, uh, 15, 15, obviously, and then, uh, I wish this was 20. Uh, this is going to be a 43 card main, 43 card main deck count. Uh, what I do want to touch on is, and as I go through the ratios, you can make this 45 and it should balance out to the same. It depends what you want. I personally, in this list, really like 43. It's been working out for me and I'm not clogging on multiples of cards, but I'll explain to you how you can play just 40. It's either playing this similar list. You're either going to be playing... Uh, you're either going to be playing 43 cards or 45. It's not going to change from that. So, yeah, I'll just get right into it here. So, okay. So, to start off, so this is the exact same list I played to... Uh, it, it kind of evolved as I went through. And then um, the list was actually the same on... Uh, so, the first tournament, it was uh, the three the three Nib, the three Imperm, three Ash, three Valor. And I didn't really like it, so... Um, it just wasn't really for the format and then I I built it with my brother and then this Tuesday was when I finalized the build So that too. So the tournament that I technically won in round five, but I didn't side in driver um, That was literally a win, but I just didn't side in driver um, That this is the sa exact same build and the uh, one that you've seen me on live, live stream for Grandmasters exact same build So 43 card list has definitely been seeing results um, So I'm gonna just lay these out here uh, three Keplers, Kepler is standard. I think you guys like better when I just go one one by one, so I'm just gonna go uh, one by one. Yeah, Kepler's, I mean, this doesn't change, right? Um, yeah, I, I really like the effect in this deck where you can bounce. Uh, it happens a lot where I bounce Ragnarok, honestly, like on the follow-up, where I'll bounce it out from, if I can't get Machine X to get it out. Um, uh, three Copernicus, right? Uh, standard, don't have to explain this too much. So this is pure, right? There's no such thing as utility at this point. Um, triple Griffin. Um, so there is something I do want to touch on Griffin. Um, so Griffin, uh, obviously, like this is the best, uh, one of the best cards in the pier. Uh, it is the best card in pier. Um, the thing I want to touch on Griffin, though, is that um, you used to be, last format, you were always searching the head on off this unless you opened it. Now you're, if, you, if, you, if you're picking your poison between headhunt or um baron unless you know you can extend through nib you're typically going for baron but even then like i always still go for baron because it plays around like very common cards being played in people's main right now is or side as well as uh nib and uh evenly and the card that can deal with that is baron and then we can also put up a spell and trap negate so typically um you're safe to just grab the orthros instead of just searching the uh head on off of this that's typically what i'm going for now it's more valuable this format than it was uh, last when headhunt headhunt was just an auto win against like tier even. Uh, so yeah, uh, for the last three of we're playing three swirl slime. Don't have to explain this. This doesn't go down any, any lower. It helps you make so any conjunction of these will open up a uh, full combo for you. So if you can open any three of these, it's amazing. Um, or sorry, any any of these in a combination of three, it's literally just it's you're usually just winning the game. Um, plays around through a lot. Uh, the last, uh, so for the only one and only two of, it's Orthros. Uh, some people in my stream were saying to play this at three. I mean, go for it if you'd like. I don't know why you would want to because I literally want to kill myself if I open more than one of this card. Um, card's good, yes, but I mean, there's no real purpose to play more because it doesn't, if this card and you don't want to open this card and itself, like this card and another, like, and you don't want to, the only card, the only time you want to open this is if you open like this and this really, like this and Griffin are a way to search Griffin. Um, it's not very good if you go Copernicus plus uh, Orthros because then you have to find a way to get Griffin. That way you can just scale up. Like it's a long story short, but I mean, uh, basically you don't want to hard open Orthros. Like you do, but like you don't, you don't want to open it in multiples. So like, it's weird because like when you deck build, you want to like put a card to three that you really want to see in your opening hand. And like, 
you do and you don't want to see because you're fine searching this right but like you also don't want to risk multiple multi, uh, opening multiples because opening multiples of this like really sucks because it doesn't fare an interaction right the other cards you want to play three of because they can fare an interaction with a lot of other cards right so that's kind of that's kind of the um point of just playing two like i mean it's up to you what you want to do you could play three but i find it's definitely clogged if you play three and you should be fine to be able to just search it off griffin so yeah, um, I don't think any more than two is uh, any more than two is uh, necessary. Uh, so with the scales, uh, playing all these. So uh, yeah, a lot of people know me for not playing this sometimes. Um, I'm gonna go back on. I'm sticking to these right now because I just like having the utility. I've been back and forth depending on what I want to do. Like I've used to play like aggressive small world list where I just only wanted to go for the Baron, and I uh, just I found a way to like have these with um, different utility cards. So yeah. Not much explained to do. If you guys watch my stream, I use this to like shut out like hand traps uh, against a Sky Striker player in Graveyard. Uh, it's pretty strong. And then it gained the opponent's life points. Yeah, Rage is pretty awesome. Uh, these these two definitely brick. Like, I'm not going to lie. These two like brick sometimes. Like uh, game two against a Sword... Or game two going second against a Sword Soul player. I opened Necro Slime and then I drew this for turn. Then I drew that for turn. I was like, seriously? And then I had Scoop. So, yeah. So... Yeah, for the other uh, utility cards, uh, these three, nothing has to be explained here, really, I would say. Um, Typhon, you have to play, you can't cut this card. Uh, great extender, especially if you get nibbed. And uh, the two-card combo you're doing now, you're going to want to send this. Um, you're going to want to send this, so you can just do, uh, you can end on um, an, additional, uh, an additional body, right? So, yeah. Uh, Advice Typhon is just a great way to explain. I really don't have to explain these cards. So uh, for the DD count, I think it's 21 cards, right? Uh, it's 21 cards because this is 12, uh, 14, and then uh, 18. Yeah, it's 21. So 21 DD cards. In theory, you should open at least two. Uh, no, no less, right? Um, so for the contracts, three gate, one, one, and then headhunt. Don't have to explain this much here, right? Um, so you don't want to cut... You could play like the trap in your main, but I just don't recommend doing that because the reason why you want to play five of these is because you can just, if there's times where you don't want, you don't want to not open a contract so you can't pop your Griffin because Griffin cannot pop itself out of scale when you go Thomas play. Um, you really want to be able to have access to that place. So playing five ensures that like in theory says you should open at least one in theory, right? Um, especially with all the other cards to search. So playing five so you can hard draw them is really good. License to hard draw going first is really good too, right? So, uh, yeah, this card's really strong into a lot of matchups like uh, Trap Tricks. Uh, it protects you from Zeus. Um, it protects you from um, Cast Tier doing a lot of stuff, right? I mean, this and this against Cast Tier is literally auto win. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah, not much to explain there. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't cut this down any less. There's not much explaining I have to do this because I've, I've done this every single deck profile, right? Um, I guess some people expect me to like have the rage package cut sometimes, but that's just not the case. So like I said, initially, this is not changed up, right? Uh, so for consist consistency cards, uh, this is going to be much different now. So, um, so yeah, this is what we're playing for consistency now. So um, this used to, for a while, I was just going three, three Piri map with the one for one. Um, this had to change because um, I figured... The problem was I was just losing to Ash too many times and like this was just too predictable where I like search a card, uh, normal summon effect and like this still does it right. I mean you're still playing it but it's, here's what I'm trying to say is that Small World also enables you a one card combo. Small World can also search you other cards that I'm going to get into in a little bit. Uh, it has a great utility access but like the decision between Small World and Piri Map you can just play both if you can find the room and it honestly works really well. Um, this also just acts as a one card starter because it can grab you Kepler and you're playing the one card combo. Uh, so Small World's really good in that sense and it also serves a utility purpose going second which I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, one for one is full combo absolutely uh, but so is Piri. Like this ensures you like this makes it so like you can go if you open both of these it, it's basically like um, Piri Map plus Small World. It's basically like, okay, they ask your Kepler or whatever, and then you can just Small World as an extender. Like, Small World acts as an extender because it doesn't matter when you activate this, uh, which is really nice. It's also because you hand traps, right? But the main purpose for playing all this is because I really needed to find a way to boost the consistency, and I found this did it for me so I could open enough to at least extend through something. So adding the three Small Worlds is great. Um, now, the one thing I want to touch on is, uh, I'll touch on it after just because I'm not done the list yet, but um, 
yeah, there is a world where you can play three, but I'd rather just play two of this and three of this because um, clogging on multiple periods, the same thing as small world, but like I'd rather just have small world over th three period. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. You can play three small world and two, sorry, three period and two small world. But the thing is, you don't want to play two small world because you're already playing the bridge, which is considerably the brick. Uh, you don't want to, that's why I'm playing three small world over, over a three period, right? But playing two of this is fine because you're seeing it when you need it and it's a great top deck, right? And then one for one is just there, right? So one for one is essentially another version of period, right? So that's kind of where the, the formula, uh, the theory comes from. So yeah, Small World and Imperial are being played right now. It's, I've seen success for the last two tournaments playing it. It was the last two tournaments I've been playing those exact ratios. So yeah, um, and the consistency has definitely been there. Um, so for the bridge cards, uh, I'm playing these. So uh, Centric and Radiant. So this is where I'm saying where it becomes effective going second. Now, um, I was playing Santa Claus for a bit, and I real or for the last tournament, I was playing Santa Claus, um, and I didn't like it because... There is a 1200 restriction where you can't search Griffin. I did not like that. And then I got to a theory where Santa Claus, it, there's no point of playing Santa Claus because you're always trying to search this if you need a Kaiju. Because Santa Claus is a Kaiju. So it's like, oh, if I hard drop my brick, uh, I can just use it as a, as a tribute summon, right? Like to tribute over my opponent. But honestly, that never came up. And I'd rather basically playing it like this makes it so I'm playing four Kaijus if I'm going second. It makes it so I'm playing four Kaijus. And then if I'm going first... This is just a card I can bridge for any other combo piece if I open it with Small World, right? So basically how this works is if you're going second, what I'm saying with you, you having four Kaijus is that you're not going to bridge out Kepler typically. But what happens is uh, if you open Small World and you're going second and they have like a face up, they decide to go like for uh, the uh, Arise Heart play or whatever, or they have like the one problem card, you go Small World. Uh, as long as you don't need a way to extend, right? But typically if you're against something like that, you need to get rid of it. So you go Small World uh banish banish and then this shares fiend this is a dark fiend so you can't bridge between these but you would go banish this and then you can search the uh radiant and then it's a it's an immediate kaiju so it just it's like you're playing four kaijus going second but then it also serves a consistency card going first if you open this right so it's really good to just play the one i found that was just perfect ratios right so yeah so that's where that comes in and that's why i also wanted to play swarrels because then i can search out the kaiju which is really strong and i can only, and i only have to play one of it so it serves as a pretty consistent uh way to go second and first so yeah that's what i'm playing for that <clears throat> so yeah uh for the go second cards uh two nib well put this here so two nib right uh with the radiant that's a go second card imperm and then evenly so i'm only playing nine right so i'm gonna break this down a little bit so this as you can see is 43 cards if you want to play 45 cards to keep your consistency ratios and your go second cards the same uh you would play a third period map and then you would play the third nibiru now i'm okay with playing two nib because number one i can search it going first right i can search it off small world going first because this is a this is a light um the um the thing is though i'm okay like i want to see nib right like i want to open it but if i open nib like there's a lot of times where my opponent plays around nib and it's just like okay like it's just glued to my hand right like there are a lot of matchups where though it's just not effective right so um i'm okay with playing two nib and it's been completely fine it's there when i need it uh because not every time you're going to need nib to out a lot of boards right like imperm can do the job a lot evenly is a whole blowout so you I want to keep my so I want to keep my deck count to 43 as well to have a better chance of seeing evenly match going second because this card is a blow literally just blows out every single board going second right now. Uh, it's so strong. Uh, if you can open this in like a good combo, you're you're pretty well just winning the game because you're resetting and then it makes it hard for them because not a lot of decks have a good crack back. So evenly is insane right now. The good thing about us is that we actually have a good answer to evenly. Uh, if you guys watched my stream last uh, last Friday um i basically or whatever that was when i played uh the locals um i basically decided to pun i went for baron combo but i didn't make siegfried i, I had a gut feeling i should have made it and i played against a sprite player and he infirm impermed evenly me and that was just done like it was just so broken but yeah we have a way to answer it twice so that's really good like uh siegfried and baron so yeah so basically like i was saying oh i'm not done kind of explaining this yet uh so going second it becomes 12 go second cards um because so uh, this going second becomes automatically... So this, this card is either a going first card or a going second card because going second, I can bridge out this. If I hard draw this, I can bridge it. 
or I can just take out a, a unnecessary piece and search out a Radiant. And then the Kaijus are such a good trade-off right now in this format. So that's what I love. They get rid of the big problem card on the board. Uh, so yeah, basically 12 going second cards as you can see this. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of where this all comes from. And it's not, we're not going under the same theory of like two hand traps because like the 12, the 15, 18 hand traps is just not really that effective right now. It's more so like blowout cards like these, right? So Imperm's the best hand trap by far right now. Uh, this can literally end turns a lot, and it's not once per turn. It's also great going first as long as you don't clog on Imperm's, right? It's the only card you're going to be setting anyways, so it's fine. You can just set this with a head on. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty it's pretty strong. So uh, so basically, yeah, that's where all this theory came out. It took a little bit for me to theory this and like kind of move away from the, the hand trap, multiple hand trap approach that I've been used to for so long. And this ended up just being the best way to do it because going uh like i said going first it's like i have um eight if i have i have this to uh i'm usually going to draw one of these right and then uh, if i draw this i can bridge it out and then going second it automatically reverts to 12 cards going second that are very effective into the meta right now so that's where all this comes from so yeah so uh let's kind of take this out and then the last thing i want to go over on my list is the starters so I am currently playing 12 ways to a one card combo, which is what I also like. Now, the other thing I was going to say is that now this can stay here because this is essentially a starter card. Uh, you can either go off of like one card. You typically when you build, you're trying to go off of like cards that give you a starter. Right. So uh, if I can get the other cards, so yeah, these and then gates. So these are all. So these, all these cards facilitate a one card combo. That's 12. If you go to 45 cards, um, it's probably, it's going to be the same thing as seeing a one card combo, but in the 43 card list, I think you're fine to play 12 cards to a one card combo. You should in theory see at least one. Um, and then these also facilitate, they're essentially one card combos, but they do need something else to facilitate it, but they are starter cards. So you're basically, you're playing 15, 15 starter cards like this. Uh, you're playing 15 starter cards in a, um, in a uh, 43 card list. So that's kind of where the, the, the consistency theory comes out. But Small World is also great because I just kind of explained the going first and second theory, but it's also a great way to extend when you get Ash or something, and then you can just banish a card and then uh, just uh, climb from there, right? So yeah, so that's it for the theory. I feel like that theory was much, uh, that explanation was much needed. So I'm kind of glad I was able to go over that. And yeah, so that's a 43 card main deck. Again, you can play it at 45 if you want to play a nib and a another nib in another um, uh, another nib in another um, Piri. So yeah, but I think 43 cards has been excellent for me, like excellent. So yeah, I would just leave it like that. Uh, next uh, for the fusion, so extra deck, right? I don't have to explain this much. Um, this could be switched out for the... I like having the other fusion because we don't need the other utility card. Having this is really handy. I never really go into it, but it's nice knowing it's there. And then it, I do, if I do need to go into it, it literally saves me the game sometimes. So I do like having the arc. Uh, this also gives you an option to win in time if you need to. Uh, that never really comes up, but it is a good way to win in time. Um, this could be swapped out for a Caesar if you're scared of cash. But I mean... A lot of people have seen success. I mean, I myself have seen success where they're not going to banish it. And if they don't really know the matchup, like unless they're an expert in the matchup, they're probably not going to banish the C. They're probably going to go for like uh, Zeus, right? They're more than likely going to go for your one Zeus, right? So I don't expect them to banish uh, an important card like the rank four. Whoever's watching this video is now going to start banishing that, but whatever. Uh, so the XYZs, right? Yeah, this doesn't need explaining. I don't really have to go over this. It's all the same, right? Mm, you, also with machine x you could play a third one i guess if you're scared but i don't know if they see two they're not going to banish one like you only need one after that anyways once you clear cashier's board they, they they really don't do much um and then yeah i don't have to explain any of this um this is uh, like all been this is like the base standard extra deck since last year like there's no explaining this uh the side deck is going to need a little bit of explaining so let's go into the side um so it's three tactics, right? Uh, three tactics uh, for going first. We also have this for going first. Um, so I want to explain this a little bit here. Uh, so tactics has been insane to go first. Going first and second, this card's really good because uh, I have all these other utility cards that I can use. So having this is just insane sometimes. Uh, this card is really good for me in the locals that I had uh, streamed, the one that I won on Grandmasters. Uh, card's really good. Keep it at three for sure. Uh, this definitely stays. This card's insane. 
uh this 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 put in uh work i played against Fluandries and they just uh game three round four at my in-person locals this week and they they literally just couldn't do anything um so yeah that felt good um i also uh the way i actually went about this was um i was able to gamma again uh so this is round four and that one more uh round five in the finals where i lost because i didn't have driver i didn't side in driver um the one i did side driver in was uh game th or game three round four into Fluandries. Um, he, uh, shifted, he shifted me and then I had Gamma in my hand. Not a lot of people expect Gamma going first right now, which is amazing. Uh, so I was able to set up Baron, like full combo plus Eternal Darkness with two scale cards in scale. It was just ridiculous. Um, yeah, this card, this card is just so good into like everything right now. Um, XYZ, people can't XYZs. They cannot, um, they can't do Fluandry's plays. A lot of popular, uh, XYZ decks right now, right? So, uh, yeah, it's really good. Uh, and the, the non-targeting effect, too, is insane into uh, Runic. But the thing is, they have to chain all their cards, right? But it forces everything out right off the bat. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Rivalry is a really good card. I, I am going to be placing this out, though, for Bells. So I was playing Bell in the tournament. Um, I just switched them over for another utility card. But uh, these these are going to be Bells. So um, I could quite literally just do this. Uh, I never side in Rivalry because I don't think you need it going first. It's more, only, it's more so just this and then these going first with probably Bell, too. You can also search Bell off of uh, Small World, which I love. I love doing that where you, I can bridge out a piece I don't need into a hand trap. It's really good. You can usually do that at the end of the combo too if you don't need it as an extender. You can hold Small World, which is why I really like having Small World. So it's nice being able to play Small World and Piri because uh, I don't have to feel like I'm debating between the two. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be Bell moving forward. This stops Expulsion. This is also good for you going first a lot of the time too. Uh, moving on to the hand traps. I mean, I'm playing Gamma. Like I've been playing Gamma this card has not left my side deck like ever uh so yeah gamma um three ash and then double lancia so lancia i was not playing in any of the tournaments but this is going to go in uh moving forward it's it's a uh, searchable out it's searchable protection to uh it's searchable through um oh my god um small world as protection through uh um evenly matched so you don't have to worry about evenly matched uh which turns out usually just the one card in their hand which is great because evenly matched is a hard card to answer if we can't set up for it properly uh so it's nice to have this and then going second into cashteria they don't do much going second if you drop this as if you have this and all your other utility cards it's super broken so uh yeah you put this in the idea is to put this in with like all your other utility cards like this ash and then you already already have all these other cards uh which is really good right so yeah but you can also play this going first it's, that's super awesome the Ash Blossom is not in the main deck because it's honestly not that great in the main. It's really good in the branded, but it's really mediocre in everything else. The other thing, too, is that when you play this against branded, they almost always have the uh, crossout for it. So, yeah. Um, the last two times I played a branded player they've and I've asked them, they've had crossout on their branded fusion. It's been kind of annoying, but, uh, yeah, that's just the way it is, I guess. So, yeah, so that is the deck profile. Um, like, I could go and do test hands, but I'm really not going to bother because if you guys want to see test hands and how the deck performed, um, I'll just link my last stream, uh, and then you can kind of see how the deck plays. Uh, there's not really any point of me doing these because, like, everyone knows the combos at this point. Um, there's no real different ways to combo. Uh, you could see some consistency hands, but like I said, you can just watch my last stream at Grandmaster Games, and then you can just see how consistent the deck actually was for me. I only bricked once out of the four rounds, and, that, and that's typical. Like, you're gonna, you should, in theory, brick one out of every ten games, which is fine. That's normal. Um, but, um, yeah, I bricked going second, just opening a bunch of one ups. Other than that, the deck performed really well. Um, so, yeah, give this deck a shot, guys. I really highly recommend that you guys play both Small World and Peary and just play this exact list card for card. Uh, it's been performing really well. Like I said, I basically just won two locals in a row um i'm considerably 9-0 with this list right now um again the only t the only reason why i lost that uh one match against cash was because in my finals was because i did not side driver so uh if i if i did have driver in my deck i literally just uh because he asked the gate i had uh baron uh, actually there is one thing i want to go over before i quit the video this is why this is so broken I, and i this would have happened the second time but this is what i did against full Andres. i'll go gate effect to search this these two are fdk if they do anything, so he shifted me, right? But the other game, it was Ash against Cash. Ash against Cash. But basically, you can go Gate. Gate effect to search. They Ash it or they chain anything, right? You can go Gamma effect, which is really powerful, right? Uh, you're going to go... <clears throat> right? Typically, you're going to have... Um, so, you're going to have another card to summon off of. Um, oh, Driver's in my side deck. 
I'm getting like I'm getting like nightmares all of a sudden. I'm like, oh my god. So you're gonna summon Dryer from your deck. And what you're gonna do? Because typically you're gonna have a card like Copernicus or a way to like just combo to make a uh, your two card combo. You're gonna go ahead and search. Uh, this is if you can afford to do it, which you almost you almost always can, or you're already gonna have Swirl Slime. Uh, so let's say you already had Swirl Slime or something. This typically always happens. You're gonna have some. You're probably gonna have a way to Copernicus. Basically, this is what I would have done both games, but I did the one game. Uh, normal summon the DD Swirl Slime. You synchro these for a 10 and it becomes barren. So you're already protected on your third summon or on your fourth summon, I guess. And then you're going to banish this and just continue with your combo like that. It's pretty broken. So uh, yeah, this would have happened in game three and round five. But again, um, I'm more proud that I actually lost because I didn't set a driver in because that's like iconic. So I can always uh, make a joke about that with my friends. But uh, yeah, uh, so technically this list is 9-0. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to give it a shot, um, I really highly recommend you guys uh, do and then go take a look at uh, the last uh, I'll link it in the description uh, the last stream I did and uh, yeah if you guys also want to hear me uh, talking about uh, when the new ban list came out and how I kind of got into Yu-Gi-Oh and all my stories I did a uh, I did a podcast with uh, Fabs he's a really big upcoming guy he's got I just seen he put the Cali effect um, he had me on the channel which was awesome uh, so yeah they're the up and coming uh, stream community so I'll also link that right here and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay jacked.